released my first music video, Dining with Ghosts, and yep. seems to be doing pretty good. And um, and it points to the cross as well, which which is really important to me. And I have Absolutely. a lot more coming. So, but I, I wanted to talk to you um, just to you're in the ministry. Mm -hmm. I want to find out kind of like just give me a, a kind of a brief overview of kind of what it was like growing up, and if if your parents were you know family were they. Christians or saved or people of faith or other faiths or what was it like growing up and and what moved you in the direction of even playing music sure and then playing music in church services and and then becoming a minister because yeah. you've, you've been a minister at some other churches prior to being mm -hmm. here in Houston so uh, I just kind of want to know that journey yeah well that's that's a cool story um, you know, I grew up in a rural town mm -hmm. and a little town in Alabama mm -hmm. in the South. So I grew up in the Southern, Southern culture, living the Southern life, doing the mm -hmm. Southern thing where everybody's, you know, bless your heart and, and, oh, I'm praying for you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and unfortunately it's a lot of lip service. Yeah. Um, it's a culture Christianity. Mm -hmm. Not to say that everybody's like that. I don't want to make a blanket statement per se, but, um, I grew up in an environment where, you know, most people went to church mm -hmm. back in that day when I was a child, you know, but it was something that you did. The relationship aspect of relation, personal relationship with Christ, growing in a personal relationship with Christ, going through mm -hmm. discipleship, those were not really things that were emphasized mm -hmm. um, in the area where I grew up. You know, when I was a kid, uh, when I was four years old, I started taking piano lessons. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom always had a love for music, and my dad's side of the family, they had a piano, my grandparents across the street, and they tell me that I would go over there and I would climb up on the bench and I would just mm -hmm. like bang, bang out tunes and mm -hmm. stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, got me into my first lesson when I was four, and I actually learned, started learning to play the piano before I could even read. Wow. Did that all the way all through high school, all through college, you know, all, all been, I've been playing piano for yeah. all my life as far as I can remember. Yeah. And um, amazing piano player. <laughs> amazing. Him and his wife. I, I called his wife after service. I said, you are a virtuoso. And she's like, oh, thank you, Rob. Yeah, well, she's, like, it's she's true. Awesome. It's true. These, these two are just unbelievable. Well, God, God is, it's a God-given. I mean, I recognize the the ability that I have, yeah, mm -hmm. I took piano lessons and stuff, but um, and I taught for several years, and I know that you know when God gives out his the talents to different people, He gives it to people, and mm -hmm. He wants right. people to use those gifts to bring glory to Him, and mm -hmm. and um, it clearly is a, a talent that God has given me, and I just want to be faithful and giving it back to Him. Mm -hmm. But uh, my parents, you know, went to a little tiny Baptist church. I mean, if there were Gosh, if there were thirty people there, I mean that was yeah that was that was full. Yeah. And they only met on the first and third Sundays of the month. Right. Because it was an itinerant preacher, you know, and they didn't have anybody preaching on the second and fourth. Mm -hmm. Which was I you know, I still don't understand that whole thing. Yeah. But anyway, we would go and, and I remember I would like listen and my 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 impression of church was people yelling, the pastor yelling. Yelling, 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 <laughs> yelling, slamming his fists down, mm -hmm. you know, and they would sing some songs and, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it was mm -hmm. nothing that would cause anybody to want to go. Yeah. You know, again, it's yeah. part of that cultural thing. People went because it was part of that culture and um, kind of more religion than relationship. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely more. That's, that's a great way to say it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and. Brother Jerry's been doing some teaching on the spirit of religion yeah, over this last sure. year. And, you know, and it's really just opened my eyes, too, to how many pockets in our, in our world, how many churches are bound to that spirit of religion mm -hmm. as opposed to the spirit of God and right. following his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I went there, my um, take, taking piano lessons, um, thankful that music is in the church mm -hmm. and the church gave me opportunities to use my gifts at that little church one sunday my grandfather told me he'd give me ten dollars if i would go play the piano <laughs> and uh, and i'm what like you gotta do that and i remember motivate. like show me the money paul paul show me the money 
and he showed me pull out the tin. He's mm -hmm. like, laid it down. He's like, and I went up and I said, okay. I'll play the piano today. <laughs> <laughs> and I went up and I played played a couple of the hymns uh -huh. and um, went back and got my ten dollars. And that was kind of the beginning of me playing the piano mm -hmm. in church. Mm -hmm. um, wow. There was a children's choir at the First Baptist Church in the town where I grew up in, mm -hmm. and um, small church again. But uh, they they got me involved in children's choir, so I started mm -hmm. going to that and did a musical with them. Then the minister of music knew that I could play the piano, and he asked mm -hmm. me to go play the piano for children's choir. So I'm a kid in kids choir playing the piano for kids choir. Wow. I'll hit the accelerator here, and it just took off from there. And um, by the time I was in the sixth grade, I had started playing the piano for the church, like morning services, wow. Sunday night services, Wednesday night services, um, playing for choir practice um, on Wednesday night. I mean, literally youth choir mm -hmm. practice on mm -hmm. Sunday. I mean, we started at, you know, Sunday school was at 945. Then we would have church at 11. Then we'd be back at 430 for youth choir and then we would have what's called training union at the time or Sunday night mm -hmm. Bible study mm -hmm. and we would do our groups and youth group and stuff and then we would have a service on Sunday night mm -hmm. and then Wednesday night we would have a service and I would play for that yeah. and then we would go right into choir practice and I mean I started spending so much of my time yeah. at church mm -hmm. and I had a minister of music that saw this gift recognized this mm -hmm. gift in me and made an investment in my life and started challenging me. Mm -hmm. I mean, he would give me songs to play like 15 minutes before the service would mm -hmm. happen on Sunday night. He would say, I'm going to sing this tonight. Wow. And, uh, and I would just have to play it. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it at the time, but that's when I learned how to sight read music. And, you know, because I, he was challenging me all the time, I kept getting mm -hmm. better and better and better and better and better. Wow. And uh, he took me to hear my first orchestra at the University of Alabama. Uh, by the time I was in 10th grade, in high school, I'd enrolled at the University of Alabama, and I was taking piano lessons at the university with these college professors. And um, so by the time I was in fifth grade, I was on a collegiate level in, in music and studied yeah. through the rest of high school. Mm -hmm. You know, I was involved in youth group. And um, right after I started playing the piano in church, I was 12 years old. Um, my mom just made this statement. She said, well, mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to be playing at the church, you probably need to join. You know, and I'm like, sure. what does that mean? She's like, well, you need to go up and, and, and be baptized and, and join the church, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, okay. So I go up at the end of the service, tell the pastor, hey, I want to join the church. And at that Sunday night, they actually baptized me. You know, mm -hmm. the spirit of religion, man. Yeah. There was no personal relationship. Nothing's mm -hmm. happening. You know, fast forward a couple of years later, and I'm at a youth group meeting. And um, the youth pastor, who was also the music pastor, mm -hmm. different person by now, and, um, and he just says, hey, Alan, why don't you lead us in prayer to end up the meeting tonight? You know, and I'm like, no way, man. Yeah. I'm not doing that. You know, and he was just kind of like perplexed. And, and after the meeting was over, he pulled me aside and he said, man, how do you expect to get to know God if you're not going to talk to him? Mm -hmm. And that was when the light bulb went on and I realized I'm like, something's not right. I'm lost. I'm lost. And um, the church had these uh, little little pamphlets around called the Roman Road. Mm -hmm. And I remember grabbing one of those, took it home, locked myself in the bathroom, sat down on the floor, and read that entire pamphlet from cover to cover. And at the very end, it had a, uh, a copy of the Sinner's Prayer. Mm -hmm. And um, and I prayed that night and asked Jesus to, to come into my heart and to save me and forgive me of my sins. And How old were you? By that How time, I was 15. 15. Yeah. 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 You know, so I knew that I, everything started clicking together and mm -hmm. I'm like, I need to, I got to get baptized now. Mm -hmm. I got dunked before. Yeah. Now I got to get baptized and, and uh, ended up going back at the end of the service and telling the pastor, like, you know, I wasn't saved yeah. when I got baptized, Yeah. you know, which uh, I've often thought about. <laughs> I'm like, dude, why didn't you, why didn't you ask me? Mm -hmm. Which again, is why I was so diligent when talking with Dylan the other day. I'm like, mm -hmm. I want him to know that he knows that he knows that he knows. Absolutely. And, uh, and it's so important to, when we talk with people about Christ and you're sharing your faith with somebody and uh, you want to make sure that they know that they know that they know 
and they have a complete mm -hmm. understanding when someone follows Christ because the enemy loves to come in and make us doubt and yeah. make us think that we're not saved if we, you know, if we sin or if we do mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. you know, um, we're still a fallen people. But yeah. I ended up making that decision to follow Christ, got baptized. Mm -hmm. that, I was 16, I think mm -hmm. 16 by the time that all came together. And that same summer, I had gone to a youth camp our youth camp, our youth group would go to camp up in North Carolina, this group place called Ridgecrest. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would spend a, a week up there every summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that summer they talked about God's calling on your life. Yeah. And they actually gave a call for students that really felt like God might be calling them into mm -hmm. ministry. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, God just began to work in my heart. You know, and I'm like, God, are you really speak? Are you really calling me to do this? And, um, and I remember he just gave me the scripture, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. And I just began to seek God. Um, I just began to seek him. I began to get into his word and read his word. And um, there was just, there was no question in my heart that God was calling me into full-time ministry. Yeah. And I surrendered to ministry there at Ridgecrest that summer and came back home and, you know, shared it with my church. Yeah. The yeah. church completely supported my calling, you know, and had a service to license me as a minister when I was, I think I just turned 17 by then. Right after I graduated high school, took my first job as a worship pastor, minister wow. of music back in the day. Wow. 17 years old, man. Um, That's pretty cool. I was, it was two months before I turned 18. And uh, so 17, this church hired me to be their music minister of music. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, I just look back at the people there and the pastor and, I just want to go and apologize. <laughs> I just want to go apologize yeah. to him, you know, but he gave me such freedom and, and leeway to really explore God's call on my life mm -hmm. and to learn how to lead people in worship and to really, you know, cause I'm, I'm still growing up uh -huh. and uh -huh. having to understand what worship was really all about. Yeah. You know, it was not just music, you know, and, I've been able to, to be at different places and attend different conferences and throughout my schooling, throughout college, um, I've seen God move in different ways and just I've learned mm -hmm. so much through the last 33, 35 mm -hmm. years of leading worship. Mm -hmm. um, you know, God's just taught me so much and, uh, and I never want to get to the place where I think that I've arrived, yeah. you know, because I, every week I learn something new about the mercy of God mm -hmm. or the grace mm -hmm. of God or I see how his hand is working in someone's life. Right. And, um, and I'm just, I'm so blessed. I'm just, I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. I count myself mm -hmm. blessed mm -hmm. to be able to do what I do and um, just want to fulfill the calling that God's called on my life and, and do it mm -hmm. to the best of my ability to be faithful and right. accomplish what it is that he wants me to do. Yeah. Sanctify. Yes. Can you hear that? Sanctify. Do you hear shame? Do you hear shameless robber? Sanctify. Can you hear? You want that camera in the shot? Yeah, I just kind of put it there to make it look like a... Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Cool. Legit.